Well, I don't like change. I don't like change. Well, sometimes it's good for a change to happen. It's good for things to happen. God don't change. But if you give him your life, you'll change it into something that is useful. That's where we need to be. Lord, if I need to change, change me. The Bible says if the Lord, if God turns me, then I'll be turned. So that's where I need to go. If, if God turns me, if the Lord says you need to go this way, then I'm going to turn. We don't need to seek after our own understanding and follow the, the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. These things will get you entangled in this world and they won't let you go. It's a fight to get out of that. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. Think about that for a minute. We live in a day and age where they want the easy route, the easy route. The Bible says wide is that path that leads to destruction. People was following that every day. We're supposed to be the road mark, or we're supposed to be the road sign pointing people the one way. Amen. Telling people that there is a better way. Isaiah said, I saw a way and a highway. And the way was called holiness. And that's the way it is. We've got to walk holy before the Lord yeah. if we're ever going to receive anything of God. He wants us to walk holy before him. He's a holy God and he'll accept nothing other than that. Our flesh is weak. We go through the struggles. We find ourselves in trouble. But God is greater than our flesh. He says if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. God is good. Anybody got anything we need to pray about this morning?
you know they're just like scattered. So pray for them. That, I mean, I'd like for them to come here, but if not here somewhere, we are going to get fed and be satisfied and grow in God and hang on, you know, so time to be called out of here. Remember that. I talked to a lady. I'm, I'm in in a, another prayer chat on Facebook, and, and I talked to a lady yesterday for as, as several of us that was talking to her, and and she was wanting to come back to the Lord. She backslid slid a long time ago, and, and she was wanting to come back to the Lord, and we prayed with her, and and, and then there were, a few minutes later there was another lady that got on there and said she would like to come back to the Lord, and and, and you know all I can say is Lord send that conviction, get hold of their hearts, and. And, and let them have a desire to truly change. You know, repentance is one of the easiest things in the world. People make it complicated. Repentance is simply changing your mind about the direction you're going. That's it. You say, God, forgive me about all the things that I've done, and I want to change my mind and not go that way anymore. And you start following a different path. And that's that's how easy it is to repent. And and a lot of people, they complicate it, and they make things hard. And, and I told the lady, I said, the hardest forgiveness that you're going to receive is you giving it to yourself. I said, the Lord is willing to forgive you. I said, take the, the story of the prodigal son, for instance. I said, when they saw the, the when he saw the son coming back down the road, the son was burdened. I, I believe he didn't even have his eyes up. I believe that he was walking along that dusty trail, maybe kicking rocks. And the whole time his mind was distracted about all the things that he had been through in life and everywhere that he had been. Remember the hog pit that he would just wallow in and, and all the things that he was eating. And he was just burdened down. But he said, if I can get back to my father, father's house right. and see the father saw him yeah. the bible says he saw him afar off and he ran out to meet him and fell upon his neck and kissed him and put a ring on his finger and welcomed him back in that's the love of the father and that's what i tried to tell him i said he's ready to run out and meet you you just got to make that journey you've got to start and see we got to let people know that god loves them so much he loves them so much for god so loved the world that ought to be the message going out to that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's the message that needs to go out we need to tell people run from what it is that's coming to destroy you run to where there's life run to where there's help David said I look to the hills which cometh my help my help cometh from God we need to let them know there is a better way pray for those if you know somebody that's lost and undone pray for them Pray that God will put a word in your mouth yeah. that they'll hear. Because so, a lot of people would come and talk to me when I was out of church. And I, I, would, I would hear what they're saying, but I just I didn't let it sink in. Until yeah. somebody got a hold of God and said, God, yeah. let that conviction fall. Yeah. And when that conviction began to knock at my heart's door, that's when the pull began. That's why I was already miserable. I knew that I needed to get back to God. But until the conviction showed up, I didn't know which way to go. I didn't know how to get there. Conviction is a good thing in the house of God. Yes. A lot of people try to pray it off. Pray it in. Right. Let it change you. Right. Pray it in. Accept those changes. See, the conviction is something that when you become a Christian, you don't get rid of that conviction. That conviction is what whispers to you when you're about to do something wrong. He says, oh, you ought not do that. Oh, you ought not say that. Oh, you ought not watch that. Turn the TV off once in a while. Shut the filth off. See, there's a lot of things that creep into our house because we allow it to. Because we're standing by and holding the door open for it. But it's time. It's time that we start shutting off some things. Turning off some things. Not closing some doors. Not leaving it open for all this ungodliness to come in. Because when it comes in, it don't want to leave. Right. It wants to set up house. Amen. It's up to us to safeguard our home. We got children growing up. Right. Joe, he's grown. He can make up his own decisions. But he lives in our house. He still respects our rules. Right. Understand, we taught him the right way. We pointed him in the right direction. Right. Not everybody has had that same upbringing. I was, I was surprised to find out how many people have never been to church when I started talking to people about going to church. Because when I was a kid, I took for granted everybody went to church. They didn't. They don't. There's people out there that's never stepped into the house of God. I may be the only Bible that they ever sit down and read. So I want my life to be living according to what God's purpose is for me. I want to be something that he can be proud of. 
But if you know somebody lost and not done, pray for them. Don't discount them. Don't count them off. It doesn't matter if they're on drugs. Pray for them. They need a deliverance. It doesn't matter how long they've been an alcoholic. It don't matter what they've gone through, the struggles in life. I don't care if they sat behind bars for 70 years. They still got a soul. God wants to save them. Pray for them. Pray for them like you're earnest for them, like you believe that God is about to do something. And watch God do it. You know, the Bible says faith without works is dead. We've got to put faith and works together. That's how we get anything. Anybody else got anything today to pray about? See, we all had that longing to be in the house of God. Every, you know, I'm not stingy. I'm not praying, Lord, take them out of another church and send them here. I don't want to fish in somebody else's pond. But there's enough people in Glasgow that can fill every church in here. And my prayer is, Lord, send them to a church that will tell them the truth. Send them to the church that will tell them that thus saith the Lord and, and stand upon the truth and, and not let them be deceived. Because there's a lot of buildings that's open that, that have a cross in the front yard and have a, have a big lit up sign and, and they don't teach the Bible at all. They teach what man says, doctrines of man. And, but give me the Word of God. Give me the unadulterated King James Version of the Word of God. That's what I need. Because that will change a man's heart. Somebody else this morning. All this rain coming through, and they live right there on the Kentucky River, just about. Neither one of them is in good health. And, you know, they don't need to be flooded in, but you know, their electric was going in and out last night. And storms today, and I know just down the road there's a lot of flooding. And there's a couple of churches that's done got underwater somewhat, so pray that. God keeps his hand upon them and that the, the waters don't rise there because the last time it was two weeks before they was able to get out. She still don't have no energy or anything, but she's trusting in God, but she said, you know, what's the sense of me going back to the cancer doctors and everything because they can't do nothing for me. They've done told me they couldn't. And she said she's trusting in God. Just, she said just pray for her that her faith stays intact. She said because with her husband not being in church and everything, she don't really have that prayer partner that she used to have. And it, it's enough to put you in that depressed state. You no, know she's got family praying and stuff, but... You know, you can get discouraged really easily. Trust me, I know. I mean, I've got the, I had the prayers and still got the prayers and everything. But it can, it can mess with your faith and it can mess with your strength. But she said she don't have no energy whatsoever. 
I just want to increase her vitamin D. I want to increase this and that. She don't want to be on all them pills. You know, she's still losing weight. Apparently, she's lost 10 pounds in the last little bit, but she won't tell me what the little bit is because it's been at least a month since she's been at the doctor. So she's lost 10 pounds in a month. A month ago, she went, she gained four pounds. Now she's lost 10. So, and they don't know why she's losing the weight. So pray for her because she's she's lost quite a bit of weight, and she don't have a lot of strength. So just asking everybody to just remember that God will give her her strength back to where she can do what she wants to do. Remember that. Pray for someone in my for you. Uh, when she talked about the tick bite, it made me remind me. I had a little sponsor in my bed on the Facebook, and uh, she had been sick with a stomach virus and had asked for prayers the other day. But this morning, uh, she had something bit her on the neck and she grabbed it and it fell and they called it just a black widow. So pray for her uh, that God will keep her safe. We really said to her she needs to come to church. So pray for her because I know they say the black widow is the most poison. And uh, she just knew when it bit her and she grabbed it, it was a black widow. That's what it was. So pray for her. We keep praying for her. She's coming, she was probably over and I'm trying to make it up to y'all for you. Remember that? She's trying to be better than I've seen in the bottle. Remember that? Someone else this morning? I've been looking for the last time. I've been for the last time. I've been looking for the last time. I've been looking for the I just want to see you. And when he does that, let me tell you something. I remember when people come into the house of God ready for church. Yeah. Oh man, they were praying at home before right. they ever graced the house of God. Right. They began right. to have a stir in the house. And right. when they got here, somebody in the back, by the son, stood up. Some little old lady stood up and began to talk about how they were going to make heaven their home. Revival would break out of the yeah. church because they were right. excited about making heaven their home. Amen. You mentioned that now. And everybody sits there. Right. Amen. Woo, everybody sits there. They're okay. I've heard it all my life. They said, the Lord is coming back. Well, he'll find me sitting right here. He'll find me sitting right here. Let me tell you something. The Bible says if I hold my peace, that the rocks will cry out. I've got to have a rock crying out in my stand. Glory to God. The Bible says that we ought to be lively stones in the building. Hey, if I've got to come in by myself, I'm going to come in and I'm going to get in the presence of the whole body. It don't matter. Listen, it don't matter if anybody else wants it or not. Right. I'm gonna take a big old scoop of it home with me. If I gotta take it by the truck loads because nobody else wants it, right. I'm gonna load my truck and, and I'm gonna take it right on down the road and maybe I'll be able to give it to somebody who will right. appreciate it. Maybe I can take it to somebody and let them see a difference in me. May I, I may it may just be something simple as holding the door open for somebody right. from time to time. You know that? Simple. Right. It's a simple thing. Amen. It's an easy walk with the Lord. When we get it like the Bible says, right. we're going to love our neighbor like we should. Amen. You know, when you got it like the Bible says, it's easy to love your enemies. Yeah. Woo, let me tell you something. In the yeah, flesh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you try to love your enemies, you can't do it. You can't do it. And a lot of people, they say, well, the Bible says to work out your own salvation. Absolutely it does. And if you cut it off there, it means I don't have to go to church if I don't want right. to. Right. If I cut it off there, I don't have to love my neighbor as I should. Right. If I cut it off yeah. there, I can talk and watch any old thing that I want right. to. I can allow whatever I want to take place uh -huh. in my home and in, right, in, my, in, in, my, in my area. It doesn't matter. I can allow those things because I'm working out my own salvation. Right. But let me tell you something. When you add that fear and that right. trembling, it'll make you want to come to the yeah. house of God. It'll make Amen. you want to get obedient right. to God. It'll make Amen. you love your neighbor. Hey, and if you love your neighbor, you'll not want to lie on them. You'll not want to backbite them. Right. You'll love them. Glory to God. The golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Right. Woo, it ain't about what they've done. 
It ain't about how they treated you. Nobody in here can say, well, I woke up this morning saying, man, I hope somebody lies on me. Woo! Nobody in here says, I hope when I get over there, they just slap me in the face. Nobody ever says that, do they? But they say, I, Lord, I want them to treat me good. I want somebody to love me like I am. Let me tell you something. There is one that will love you in spite of what you are. Hey, if people are talking about you down here, but God says, I love you. No matter what you are, no matter where you've been, I love you. And if you'll come to me, I'll change what you once was. I can, I'll change what you once was. Maybe you can't. I've heard people say, I've been in it too long. I've gone too far. There ain't no change for me. There ain't no hope for me. I, Paul said, if I have hope in this life only, I'd be of all men most miserable. Right. Hey, but I've got hope. I'm waiting on the yeah. other side. See, there yeah. was a man that came. Glory to God. He stepped straight out of the throne room of heaven. Yeah. Hey, he put on the flesh of a man and he walked along this earth. My God. Yeah. Doing nothing but good for people. Yeah. Blessing people. Woo. When he entered into that city that last week, when he entered into that city, it was Hosanna to the king. Yeah. Hosanna to the king. Save yeah. us now. You've come to do something good. Hosanna to the king. They were laying all the branches down at his feet. They were laying all these palm leaves down. And I, I believe that some of them even took off the cloak as he come and draped it down. And they made a carpet for him to ride that little, little donkey through the streets. They loved him. But all of a sudden, somebody began to whisper. Right. I think that just like people in the church sometimes. Yeah. They begin to whisper, mm -hmm. talking. Well, that ain't of God. <laughs> this ain't of God. Let me tell you something. If God's in it, that's where I want to be. Yeah. If he's yeah. not, I'll take a seat. I'll sit down. But all of a sudden, those same ones that were saying, Hosanna to the king, it was those same ones that were saying, Crucify. Yeah. Do away with this man. Wow. Woo! I hope Pilate, he said, I'll find no fault in him. I'll let him go. And they said, oh, no. Give us the murderer. Give us the thief. Give right. us the sinful way. Give us this and give right. us that. But don't show us what righteousness is. Don't tell us what it is to be holy. Don't tell. We don't want to accept right. that stuff. Give us the sinful right. nature. Give us the way of sinfulness. That's what they wanted. That's what they desired. After. Right. Woo. And he said, well, what do we need to do with Jesus? This righteous way of living. This holiness. This, they said, do away with it. Crucify him. Right. Crucify him. Pontius Pilate. God agreed. He washed his hands in front of the people. You do what you want to with him. I find no fault in him. Let me tell you something. He washed his hands with water. I want to be washed by the blood. Amen. Woo! I want to be washed by the blood. I want to be done. Hey, it says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Give me the blood. Give me the blood. I would rather be covered in the blood. You can take me out here to the river and you can dunk me a thousand times and that don't make me any more righteous than I was. I come up still dressed in filthy rags, but you begin to wash me in the blood. You begin to pour out. Hey, that love that he had for me is what changed my life. It wasn't because he loved me that affected me, but when I decided to give him my everything, hey, my whole life began to change. My whole outlook began to change. I didn't want to walk the way that I walked. I didn't want to talk the way that I talked. There was a difference. Amen. Woo. If y'all ain't got the difference, right. y'all ain't got the goods. Right. Amen. That's the way it is. Yes. I didn't mean to step all over. Oh, oh, man. Lord, I don't but let me tell you that. something. When God, when God begins to do, you got to act. Right. You got to do. Man, let me tell you. A lot of people, they don't want to do what God says because it's easier to follow that wrong path. Right. It's easier to go whichever way they want to. Give me the drunkard. Yeah. Send me the ones that, with the needle tracks down their arms. Amen. Send me the ones that the, the world is looking at and saying they're unlovable. Amen. Send me the ones that the world says they're, they're untouchable. Nobody will touch them. Nobody will, oh, I, let me tell you something. The Bible says that he left the 90 and 9 and he went looking after that one. He went looking after that one. And if he would do that, and if he did that for me in my state, I was in a sinful nature. But he came and looking and found me. What, what makes me say that he can't save somebody else? What makes me say that salvation was just for me? Glory to God. When he stood there, with 
arms spread open and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yeah. He, everybody that was there, everybody in that angry crowd was yeah. looking at him. They done smacked him. They done spit on him. They done ripped the beard from his face. Right. They done beat him so bad he could hardly stand. Glory to God. They yeah. nailed him to a cross and he still said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Right. Glory to God. And if he has that kind of love, what kind of love should I have? Glory right. to God. The Bible says he that findeth his life shall lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Right. Woo. Right. It might cost me something, but I'm willing to pay it. I'm willing to lay it down. God, if you don't want me to have it, whoo, go on and take it, Lord. People in my life, I don't want anybody to come into any kind of harm. Don't get me wrong, but if they ain't got, if they ain't supposed to be there, Lord, pluck them out, Amen. plant them somewhere else. Hey, I want somebody that is around me All that's right. going to lift God. me up. The Bible says I Amen. am sharpened iron, and if you ain't sharpening me and I ain't sharpening you, we ain't working together. All that's right. just the way it is. We got to work for one another, Amen. pray for one another, Amen. lift one another up. Right. Whoo! But don't put limits on God. Oh, we're good for that. We're good for that. God can't do this. This is just, we get in a mind state sometimes, and, and the doctor told, told her, well, you got cancer. She could have sawed up real big. Whoo, my mama's got cancer. I got cancer. Her uncle, I think, has got cancer. Every, there's people around her uh, that, that's got cancer. She's probably known people that has died with cancer. They told her mama if she gets cancer again, there's no hope for her. And, and here she is, she's thinking got cancer she could have puffed up and died oh I remember I remember those leopards sitting outside the gate yeah whoo they were sitting outside the gate and they said why sit here until we die well glory why sit here until we die there's a city right over there I can I can see if they might have food to spare They might kill us when we get there, but we're going to sit here and die anyway. We might as well get up and yeah. make the journey. Huh? We yeah. might as well get up. They got food aplenty. Huh? Hey, maybe they'll give us something to drink. Yeah. Maybe they'll give us something good. Huh? And they begin to make that journey. Yeah. We can sit there until we die in our sleep if we right. want to. Huh? But I'm telling you right now, we'll give all it to right. the one. He said, I'll yeah. give it peace. Huh? That surpasses all understanding. I'll give it. Glory to God. He said, I'll give you my peace. I want you to understand that. Oh, Woo. I, want to, I said, I'll give you my peace, not as the world gives. Because the world will give it and the world will take it. They'll jerk it right out from under you. He said, but I'll give you my peace. Think about that for a minute. I'll give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. When you're going through the struggle and people are saying, well, how is he still standing? <laughs> something about the blood. <laughs> Woo, yeah, there's yeah. something about the blood. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I may be weak in myself, but greater is he that's in yeah. me than he that's in the world. I can stand and I can make it. Hey, Brother Bill always said, if you can take it, you can make it. Glory to God. It's time that we start enduring some things, going through some things. Yeah. Quit throwing our heads up, ready to quit and lay down. Glory to God. But let's do something. Let's Amen. do something. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. God has been right. good to me. Oh, he's blessed me every step that I've ever made. Oh, and I've not always walked with him, but he's always been right there. Right. He's always been watching. Right. Oh, he left the 99 and was looking for that one. That's because that one was looking back for him. Let me tell you something. He, he's a gentleman. He ain't going to come in and kick your door down and drag you out of it. Right. But if you're willing to change your ways, right. if you're willing, if you come to the end of your rope, Sometimes we got to get to the end, as far down as we can go, before God is willing to reach down and change us. Do you know why? Because <laughs> He works best with with lost causes. Right. <laughs> he works best when hopelessness is abound. He works best when there's no way out. Right. Because He's the door. Jesus said, "I'm the door of the sheepfold. Yeah. If you want in, you're gonna go by Him. That's the only way. Yeah. That's it. Only He'll make a way when there seems to be none." Right. That's what, ain't that what God does? When you find yourself in a room and all the doors are locked, he's about to open a window. Yes. Woo, glory Amen. to God. God is good. Amen. God is good. Yes, is. Let the world go by and give me Jesus. Let the world let, let the world sacrifice whatever they want to. 
Let them, let them lay down and let them do this and let them do that because they're going to do anyway. Right. The Bible done told me that they were going to take what was wrong and make it right. right. And if, that, if we ain't living in that day, exactly. y'all ain't looking at the news like I've been looking at it. Y'all ain't seeing things happen in this world like I've been seeing it. Let me tell you something. Time is short. The Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. Yeah. My reward's are with me to give every yeah. man according to his works. Hey, when I stand before him, I want my works to be good. Hey, I didn't get saved by works. I didn't get right, saved in right. myself but glory to God when he gave it to me it was a gift of God yeah. when he changed me he gave me a desire right. and he gave me a direction he hired me in to the army of the Lord I got to go to battle sometimes yeah we got to go to battle sometimes we got to pray for those that despitefully use us we got to do these things we got to oh but when we stand there and he says you've been faithful over a few things Woo, glory to God. He said, now I'm about to make you ruler over many. <laughs> welcome into the joys of the Lord. Y'all just come on in. He's going to say, welcome home. Welcome home. I'm going home one day. I'm going home one day. We spiritually stub our toe and give up. Oh, not me. Mm -hmm. Why sit here until we die? Woo. I'm on a journey because I know there's a city out there. <laughs> a city not built by man's hands. Glory to God. A city like we ain't never seen. <laughs> Woo, I can see it. Hey, if you listen close, you can hear them warming up. I'm telling you, one of these days I'm going home. Yeah. I'm going home. Yeah. I used to sing that song, Ain't No Grave. Going to hold my body down. Oh, man. You can bury me under a mountain if you want to. <laughs> but when he calls my name, I'm coming up. <laughs> I'm coming up. There's people that's died at sea and they've had sea burials and they're under so many gallons of water, so, so many uh, hundreds of feet, miles of water, so to speak. Right. Doesn't matter. If they had their hearts right, right, when the Lord comes back, he knows where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming up out of there. Amen. They're coming up out of there. God is good. God is good. Amen. If everybody that would, we're going to give you an opportunity to pray this morning. I don't know. You got anything? Yeah. You sure? I mean, yeah. I invited you and I stepped all over you. Alright, no all over you. It's his house, I'll buy it yourself. If your church preach and somebody else said something, they'd be mad at you. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I'm not a jealous preacher. I, when the Bible says to prefer your brother, I, I do. I do. But you know what? When God puts a word in my mouth, I've got to get it. And I didn't, I don't know, just that song, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, you got to have music to set the mood. Uh, if you come in the right mindset, it don't take music to get you there. Right. No. Come as you are. Come as you are. Come in the mindset. Sometimes I've been in the church houses before, and, and I was supposed to preach or even teach Sunday school, and, and my mind wasn't right. And it was a war against my flesh and my spirit. And, and I had to step outside and get right with God and, and, and get on serious ground with God and, and say, God, take this from me. Take it, whatever it is that's hindering me, I don't want to be a stumbling block for them. Right. Take it, put me in the right mindset. And when I come back into the house, then I'm in the mindset. Because it says when we enter into his gates, when we come into his house, we're supposed to do it with praise and thanksgiving. Right. We're supposed to be ready. Right. Not get in here and get warmed up to it. Get yourself filled up before you come in. Talk to God before you come in. I guarantee you, if you're talking to him at home, he's going to show up and show out when you get here. Right. Yes, I promise sir. you. I promise you. <clears throat> See, a lot of people, they only crack their Bibles open when they're at church. If they do that. It's sad. <laughs> it's a sad thing. Amen. But you know what? He said He said this morning, you got to have it in your heart. Right. I can't write it in your heart. Only God can do that. Right. Right. Only God can. But if you get serious with him, he'll write it there. He'll, there. he'll give you a promise that the world can't break, I'll tell you. He'll, he'll give you something that the world can't take away. This world, it, it, it's looking to steal, kill, and destroy anything that it can because of who it is that rules this world. <coughs> but right. one of these days, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings is coming back. Yeah. yeah. He's coming back. Amen. And there's been a few that he's passed out some talents to. And when he comes back, I want to have an increase. Right. To be able to give him an increase right. of what he's given me. Because that's what it's about. If you're not growing, you're not doing any good. If you can't have love in your heart, you're not doing any good. The Bible says, how can you hate your brother who you have seen? Right. And, love the, and love God who you haven't seen. You can't be. Because God is love. And if you have God, 
I'm gonna love you, Timmy. Right. I'm gonna love the ones that are. It doesn't matter if they spit in your face. Oh, the flesh is gonna rise up. Don't get me wrong. But in the spirit, you're gonna love them. You're gonna love them. And if you're living where you ought to be, when the flesh tries to rise up, you get it under subjection quick. Yeah. The Bible says not not to let the sun go down on your wrath. <laughs> you know why? Because you ought to get in it, get out of it, and get over it pretty quick. Right. Right. Amen. The man should be quick to listen, yeah. slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Right. We got to be quick to understand some things and listen to God first. Yeah. Even when somebody's talking to us and telling us all these things. I've had people come and tell me, well, so and so said this about you, and so and so said that about you. It don't matter. Let them. Right. If they're talking about me, they're probably giving somebody else a break. Amen. I got big shoulders. I can handle right. that. It hurts me sometimes. It does. But you know what? God has got everything. Go home and tell somebody today that look, Jesus loves them. Yeah. Go home and tell them about the cross and about the blood and, and, and let them know that there's a better way. Tell somebody. You know, I saw a man walking through Walmart when we worked there. He had a Bible in his hand. Had a suit on. And you would think, man, he is just something fired up, ready to go. And there was two women walking through there. They was holding hands. Now, don't get me wrong. Sin is sin. He pointed at him. You're going to hell. And turned and just kept going. And something stirred in my spirit when he said, when I saw this. God is love. If I condemn them, Jesus said, I come not into the world to condemn the world. Think about that. If Jesus didn't come to condemn the world, but that right. the world through him might be saved. Right. If Jesus didn't come to condemn, why should I? Now understand, don't condone it. I'm not right. telling you to pat them on the back and tell them it's okay. Right. Because understand, sin is sin. Yeah. Right. But when I tell somebody, you're going to die and go to hell, they're all to come, but there is a better way. Right. Right. Let me tell you about the escape route. Amen. Let, me tell you, let me tell you about how you get out of that mess that you're in. Because if I leave them out there in condemnation, what good am I? Right. What good am I? I'm only worth the same amount of forgiveness I'm willing to give out. Understand, if I can't love them because of what they are, how can I love God? Right. How can I love God? we got to get it right. I want to give everybody an opportunity yeah. this morning yeah. to come and pray yeah. and talk to God. And, and because I don't think you ever ought to leave church without a, an opportunity to pray. Right. It doesn't matter what kind of service it is. Yeah. Because prayer is where it happens. Prayer yeah. is where you get one-on-one -on -one with God. And if y'all know anybody that's lost or undone, Get a burden on your heart for them. Yes, Pray for them. Let's snatch them back from the brink of destruction. Yeah. Because this world is coming to an end. It's coming to an end. He told Joshua, he said, uh, he said, well, Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. He said, but, or, he said, but I'm going to make you this promise. The same promise I made him, I'm making you. Wherever the sole of your feet touch, I'm going to give it to you. Right. Think about that for a minute. He said, my servant Moses is dead. He led him as far as he can lead him. It's up to you now. But that promise I made him is carrying over to you. God will give you a promise. So you start marching it out. March around your family. March around your home. March around your church. Right. March around and claim things for God. And watch God put it in your hands. Amen. If you're sincere with God, God will bless you with it. Right. God will bless you with it. You may not always get what you want, but you'll always get what you need. God right. never, he's never failed to supply what I mean. Right. Even when I think, well, Lord, it's too late. <laughs> oh, he's been in the grave four days. It's too late. When Jesus shows up, it's never too late. Amen. He makes a way. So I'm going to give everybody an opportunity to pray this morning and just, just find a place and take it on your heart. And let's